Professor Dirk Arnott from Freiburg. Good morning. Um, gastrointestinal cancer. With what should I start? Should I first start with the disappointing news and then go to the promising? I think it's the better order. Well, um, we learned that what we have been doing, GI cancers, meaning using targeted agents which are available on the market and then bring them to GI indications and try to get a uh, signal out of this on the basis of large trials, did not work in some tumor entities. For example, Axitinib, a drug which has its merit in renal cell cancer, does not have this in hepatocellular cancer, large trial, and also serafinib, a drug also with its merits in renal cell cancer, did not work in pancreatic cancer in the adjuvant treatment. Those are important messages to understand the further development because just using a drug which addresses a pathway which is also relevant in this tumor entity, as we know, does not necessarily result in a big outcome and therefore um, this may also redefine the way we drive our research in gastrointestinal cancer and I will end with some comments to this. However, I think the most interesting field at this year's uh, meeting was clearly colorectal cancer and so far we had a kind of a, yeah, well, let's say dawn of two um, uh, drugs or two therapeutic principles which gained much interest during the last years that's either anti-EGF receptor antibodies being used in first line or anti-VEGF antibody, meaning bevacizumab, which is a worldwide standard. And as we have learned during the last two years that the RAS, RAS mutational status is really important. As we know, patients having a RAS mutation do not benefit from anti-EGF receptor antibody. There was much of the discussion if we exclude these mutations, if we have the RAS wild type population, what is then better? Should we then give the specifically targeted drug for this anti-EGF receptor antibodies, or should we rather continue with an anti-VEGF combination with chemotherapy? And the end of the story, at least here at the meeting, was like a cricket game in, in the UK where you observe a game for lasting four days, to correct me, or here 10 years of a fight uh, on the basis of a large randomized trial coming from the US, including more than 1,100 patients. And in the final end, it turned out that they do as well as good. Though there was not large of a difference between the anti-VEGF antibody in combination with chemotherapy uh, compared to the anti-EGF receptor antibody, although this was done in a um, biomarker-defined cohort of patients with RAS wild-type tumors. What do we learn from this? We do learn that maybe, and that's the key message for colorectal cancer, first-line treatment decision is not that important because patients live very long. The median overall survival in this trial reached uh, nearly 32 months. This was by far the longest. The first-line treatment duration is only about six to seven months. The first-line efficacy is about the same. So there is much beyond first-line treatment. There is much in the field of subsequent treatments and there is much in the field of maintenance treatment, which is a new field in colorectal cancer. The colleagues from lung cancer know to uh, deal with it well. But we learned that maintenance treatment, meaning following with treatment after discontinuation of the initial combination of uh, combination chemotherapy plus a monoclonal antibody, gives room for further development. And in this field, we have seen also two interesting abstracts for uh, for example, combine targeted agents in this setting and also for the use of new um, targets like immunotherapy also here with a TLR9 agonist. Uh, those things may in future play a role in the field of maintenance treatment. However, having said this, um, I'd like to also express my thoughts on immunotherapy. So far, we are a step behind in GI cancer compared to the other um, cancers like lung and also now G, uh, GU cancer. However, we received first signal from a um, PDN. PD-1 antibody in gastric cancer in patients with refractory gastric cancer. It was just a minor signal, but maybe opening the door also for immunotherapy or checkpoint inhibitors in this kind of diseases. And mainly this felt, you know, this field of maintenance treatment um, is highly interesting for the development in colorectal as well in gastric cancer. Last comment, I would just like to echo what Joanne de Bono said in his talk in the beginning. Currently, we define the diseases 
pathway dependent if you look on the molecular bio biology, but we forgot to use the information we have from the Human Genome Atlas for colorectal cancer and just recently published from gastric cancer to refine further treatment according to the subtypes which have been shown to play maybe at least descriptive and important role. So we have to learn mechanistically what does it mean if a gastric cancer patient has subtype A, B, C, D, E um, or whatever. Currently we do not take this into account when we design trials and we, we try to develop further pathway dependent drugs. But that's a challenge. I think the door was opened at this meeting and with this I'd like to thank you for your attention.